Hey, I'm Christopher J. Mua, and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna be trying out makeup from Amazon. So if you'd like to see what's inside this box, how much it was, what all makeup comes in the kit, and what kind of look I can create with it, then just keep watching, because we're getting into it right now. So if you've spent any time in the world within the last, oh, I don't know, six or seven years, you know that Amazon is the place that you can pretty much find just about anything you need. Anything for the house, if you need to do dishes or laundry, if you need bath soap, if you need sheets, it doesn't matter. It's all available on Amazon. And there are a couple of cosmetic brands that function primarily on Amazon, like House Labs, Lady Gaga's brand. But I'll be honest, I don't frequent Amazon for my makeup. So today, we have frequent. Frequented Amazon for our makeup. This is a Shani, I think is the brand, all-in-one makeup kit. And this is a $39.95. So 40 bucks for an all-in-one everything, I guess. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what's inside because we're gonna try and create a full face of makeup using only the items in this box. Well, not only. I'll need like complexion products and stuff, but we're gonna see if I can create a beautiful look using these products or not so beautiful look using these products. Test out the quality a little bit because for 40 bucks for that much makeup, I don't know how good it's gonna be, if it's even gonna be. So I'm really curious to just try it and see what it's like. Okay, so there's the Shani All-in-One Makeup Kit. Let's go ahead and take the tape off. Okay, the box is actually kind of cute. That's kind of, I don't know, it's really professional looking. A little bit bougie looking. I like that though. That means at least some of your 40 bucks goes towards the actual case. And it says that it's reusable. So you can take the makeup out and put it up and reuse just the case. Or you can keep all the makeup in the case. Completely up to you. All right, what do we have inside? So it looks like on the top there, what is that? There's a blush brush, an eyeliner, three foam tip applicators, another little brush, a lip liner probably, and a brow brush. Ooh, and what's all the fancy stuff in the bottom? My goodness, so we've got all kinds of stuff in here. It's like we've got four lipsticks on the outer edges, four blushes here in the front, and I think 32 eyeshadows with all the eyeshadows that are back here. Oh, okay, so the makeup comes out in just one big section, and you can actually just keep the little metal casing and use that by itself. I love that. Okay, I finally got everything out of the case, and one thing I really, really love is in the top of the little case, it had this sort of, well, they call it a mirror box on the front of it. It's almost like a magnetic palette, but you can take the little quad here and put it inside their little palette and store your specialty brushes right beside it and just carry it with you. So you have sort of your own little favorite eyeshadow palette, right? Right there in your little mirror box and that's pretty cute I especially imagine it for somebody like my little sister or my granddaughter just getting into makeup sort of just playing having fun not being really serious about it but just enjoying it that's what this is to me I just really hope the quality is up to par so that it will be justifiable for me to have spent $40 on it and it actually be something that works well these are the cutest little brushes that come in this <laughs> They're so teeny tiny. Well, this one is so teeny tiny. What do you even use that for? I guess that would be an eyeshadow brush. Maybe. And then this one would be our blush brush for our fluffy blown out powder color. So here's all of the eyeshadow quads. They're not named or anything. They are good for 36 months though. So this one's kind of a yellow bronzy sort of one. Pretty neutral looking. Our pinks and purples. Don't you love how my camera is auto-focusing? You know how I've never had autofocus? Yeah, that's because Mark got me a new camera for Christmas, and this is the first video that we're recording in 4K, so I apologize for my face. But you're welcome for 4K. So the pink and purple one. Then we've got probably like the smoky eye, black and gray. A little bit of a champagne in there. I don't even know what I would call this one. Tropical storm or Caribbean. Blue of water, brown of sand. Anyway, then we have 
three of the same blue and a teal? What is that about? Do they just know that everybody's gonna love the blue so much? That that's all they're gonna use. Then we've got a sort of rose one with a gray. Another one that's pink and gray. You would think it's the same one I just did, but it's not. But they look very, very close. And the last one is blue and green. Primarily green. Now the blushes I think are actually pretty great when it comes to the tones. There's actually variety there. We can go more watermelon, soft pink, really purple or really nude. Lipsticks are kind of the same concept. More of mauve, more of a hot pink, more of a red, and more of a nude. The components for these feel like they're gonna just fall apart at any point in time. At least the top does. So I would definitely be careful with those and probably the storage of those as well. Let's see, the eye pencil has two sides. I believe one is black and one is brown. And they're not super, super pigmented, but they do have color to them. So they'll get the job done. And then there's also this lip pencil. One side of it is red red and the other is red pink or just pink. See if those feel the same way. Yes, they feel very pencil -y, if you will. But they too also have a very good difference in pigment. They're at least pigmented enough that you can tell there's a difference in shades and that's really all I care about. Then the only other item are these two lip glosses. One is like hot pink pretty much and then the other is a nudie mauvey ready brown with silver pieces of glitter. I believe I found all of our matte shades. So of course we know the yellow and the peach from this one. The white from this one is also a matte. And I think the peach up here and the pink up here are also matte. So we've got pink, peach, white, peach, and yellow. Oh, I don't know if I like this. Give me just a second. I'm gonna go ahead and go off camera and get my eyes primed to probably using my Gerard Cosmetics Clean Canvas Eye Base in the shade medium, and I'll be right back. Eyes are now primed, as you can see. I've got some solid pigment over my eyes instead of the discoloration that I normally have. I did go ahead and open up all of these little eyeshadow quads in front of me and swatched just the first four quads and they're all satin shades. They all have a little bit of a sheen, except the white shade, in which case it actually is matte. So when it comes to the formula of the shadows, you don't get a lot of variety. At least satin shades sometimes give the appearance of looking matte once they get blended out a lot. So maybe we'll run into that, who knows? I have literally zero clue as to what I'm gonna do. So I guess I'm just gonna take this little quad with the two matte shades in it and some of this peachy shade and just start putting that in the inner corner, I guess, I don't know. The way that these shadows are raised in the pan, they remind me a lot of the BH Cosmetics um, Planet palette. I don't remember what it's called. It looks like every shadow is a planet inside of a palette. It's kind of cool. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see what the peaches looks like. Little Miss Peaches. Well, it's a powder. Good news, off to a great start. It is setting my eyeshadow base. That's actually a really nice peachy, creamy kind of shade. I like that so far. It's soft, it's subtle, it's not really much happening, but I still like it so far. Now there is just about nothing in here to deepen with because it's all shimmery. I guess I'm gonna try to take this shade here and see if I can't turn that into some kind of crease shade, maybe. Maybe I'll mix these two. Oh, please, please work. Please, please. Oh my goodness, is that working? I think that's working. I'm just hoping once I blend it a lot on the outer edges, it'll kind of make it look like it's not a satin shade anymore and it'll just look like it's deepening my crease up. Okay, we got a soft little ombre going on here, very neutral. The peachy inner corner with the sort of cool toned neutral brown on the outer edge. I wanna now see if I can take a little bit of color out of these palettes and add it into the look in the crease. So I'm just gonna use the same fluffy brush I was just using with the dark brown and also take some of this red shade. I don't know really what kind of red I would call it, just red. Like a rose, 
maybe? Kind of a rosy shade. I just want to see if that will go in the crease if I combine it with a little bit of that sort of neutral brown that's in the crease already. Well, it added the red. Wow, that worked and it actually looks okay. I don't think that looks bad. I think it looks better than it did. Hmm, okay. <clears throat> what was that? It's like I went backwards in puberty or something. <laughs> now for the lid, I want to take this sort of dark mauve purplish kind of shade and also a little bit of this black shade on the outer corner and sort of blend those two together. But I've got to use our little foam tip applicator because it's in there, so why not? So let's get her good and loaded up with our maroony purpley mauve. That looks really pretty. Hopefully it'll look like that on the eye too. I mean, pretty much. I sort of like that. <laughs> okay, now I'm stopping about halfway across my lid and I'm just gonna flip the little brush over and go into the quote unquote black because I don't know if it even is a black and that's gonna go on the outer edge of the lid. Yep, that's black, I think. Oh, but it's matte black. Okay, well, I'm also gonna take some of, I guess, this black because it looks shimmery too. So I was using this one at first. Now I'm gonna take the one beside it. I guess that's more like a gray, not a black. I don't know. Ooh, both of them together are sort of the perfect shade I wanted. Then I can go right back in with the ready maroon shade and make sure that that outer black section is a V. So just bring some more red out onto the middle here and kind of pat over the dark colors and it'll just blend in perfectly or it should if a shadow works the way a shadow is supposed to work. And alas, it has, I think. Then just gonna take that giant fluffy brush again. It should grab some of this gray and just mix it into the maroon that's on the crease. That's actually really not a bad eye look. I can live with this. I'm kind of digging it, as a matter of fact. Now let me finish it on the other eye to see if it still looks good once they're both done. Now that I got that pigment applied everywhere else on the lid, I'm gonna use this little teeny tiny, I think it's like a blush brush is what it normally would have been used for, but I'm gonna use it as my brow bone highlight brush and see if it'll work. So I'm gonna use this sort of really light champagne-y golden sort of color. I think it's a satin. Okay, let's see if it's brow bone material. Material. Ooh, it is, look at her glow. Okay, that's sort of actually the perfect brow bone highlight and I kind of love it. Oh yeah, definitely a great brow bone highlight for sure. Now as a last touch on the eyes, before I have to go off camera and do all of the face makeup, I'm gonna use some of the black eyeliner and just sort of tight line the upper lashes. Normally I would put an eyeliner on my waterline, but this one is really firm and really sharp and I'm not about to touch my waterline with it. Okay, even though that's not very soft or creamy, it does work. It's making a solid black line, making my lashes look a little bit thicker at their root, so I'm not complaining about it. It could be a little bit softer though. You know what, I kinda lied a little bit. That eyeliner is actually rather nice. Once you get past that really sharp edge, the sharp edge kind of hurts, especially on the tender portion of my eye. It didn't feel very good, but once you get past that really sharp part and kind of grind it down a little bit, and then you're just running the soft pencil head over your lid, that actually feels kind of nice and sort of soft. So I feel like this is a very happy place that I'm at right now. I am going to go ahead and go off camera and get all of my face makeup done so that we can come back, finish off the lower lash line, probably just using a couple of the same colors, throw on a blush, a lipstick, a lip liner, and a gloss. So give me just a couple of seconds for you and I'll be right back. Okie dokie, so here we are with the face pretty much done. Now let's throw some color on this lower lash line. I think I'm just gonna stick with this tiny little quad. It's got the same shades that I used in the crease and I'm gonna use this little pointed blender first on the dark shade. I I want to say it's a black, but it looks like it's kind of purple. So I guess I'm going to use the 
purple, and I'm just gonna take this right against those lower lashes. Sort of tight lining, but not exactly. Then I'm gonna use this more diffused brush and the brown, what is my hair doing? Then I'm gonna use this more diffused brush and the sort of brownie champagne -y shade here and try to blend out this black, purple, whatever it is with this shade. And for a little final touch moment, I'm gonna take the matte white because I think it's about the brightest shade in the palette or palettes and just fill that in the inner corner. Yeah, okay, I see you. Hey, that's actually not bad at all, especially for a very affordable matte white. Speaking of not bad at all, let's try out one of these blushes now. I've got to see what kind of pigmentation we're working with. I definitely think I'm just gonna stick with sort of the um, more nude shade, if you will. Again, we had more of like a berry pink, sort of a watermelon coral, and a more violet pink. And of course, I've got to use our super secret special blush brush that comes with the collection. So here we go. Moment of truth, I almost dropped it. Okay, got some picked up, and here we go. Oh, that is much, much brighter than I thought it would be. Wow, okay. Oh, oh goodness, I, oh man. That is not the shade I needed or wanted. What have I done? Quick change of plans. I'm also gonna add this pink shade and just bounce in between these two shades. This is really vibrant already, but it is definitely an orangey coral and I thought it was gonna be a nude. So maybe some of the pinky purple and the orangey coral together will sort of tone each other down a little bit and be just at least something in the middle. I don't know, I'm gonna try it. In all honesty, this is a pretty great blush brush. I'm sort of enjoying using it. Before I move on, I definitely have got to put some powder over this blush and try to blend it just a little bit. I can't handle the pink being so pink. Okay, now it is time for lipstick, lip gloss, and a lip liner. Um, for this look, I think I'm gonna use the pink lip liner, something that might look a little bit like my lip color already, but better. And then, gotta go with the somewhat mauve toned lipstick, I'm pretty sure. And gloss, again, sort of mauve toned instead. What is this? Is this a metallic cream lipstick? Is that what I'm putting on my lips right now? It's kind of shiny, I can't really tell. That is a very waxy lipstick. However, it actually is sort of pearlized, like kind of metallic looking. And luckily it did work out pairing with the pink lip liner. So I actually kind of am enjoying it. But now let's use the gloss and see if we can't tone it down just a little bit more. I realize that's gonna cover up the really pretty shiny pearlized finish. And that kind of makes me sad, but I gotta try the gloss. I gotta feel it. Let's see, is it scented? Nope, not that I can tell. Okay guys, moment of truth. The gloss is on. So do you like the gloss itself or do you think it looked better without the gloss? I like a shiny finish. I'm always a pretty big fan of gloss. So I think I'm happier with the gloss on, but I still did really like that pink pearlized finish that that lipstick had. So with the gloss, that is everything from the bundle. Let me throw on some mascara on my lower lashes and I'll be right back to give my final thoughts on the Shani all-in-one makeup kit from Amazon. We are done. So what do you guys think of the look? Do you guys like the look we were able to get? Do you think that the kit together as a whole made a good look? Of course, let me know down in the comments. Let's talk about it. I know for me personally, I don't think that this is worth $40 because I know that you can get, as an example, a Profusion palette from Walgreens for $20, which we reviewed also in this video if you wanna check that one out. But that gave us blushes, bronzers, highlighters. Oh, I don't have any highlight on. Oh well, I'm glowy still. But point is, it came with a lot of stuff just for 20 bucks. I realize that this comes with 
lip glosses and a couple of pencils, some brushes, and the little mirror box. Oh, and the lipsticks as well. So I guess that could justify the other $20 of cost. However, you're really, really limited when it comes to the powders in this palette, in this kit. There are 32 eyeshadows, but three or four of them are matte. The rest are all satin. So the versatility you have within the eyeshadows is very limited. The base that you can build is very limited. However, if you are the type of person that likes to just take a shimmer shadow with your finger or a flat brush or whatever and just throw it on your lid and call it a day, this will be perfect for you. So this is something, if I could get it for 20 bucks, maybe even 30, maybe 30, I would buy it for the grandbaby or the little sister. For someone that doesn't have a whole lot of experience and isn't nitpicky about how they do their eyeshadow. I think this would be the perfect kind of fit for somebody like that. So with that, that's it for me for this video. Again, let me know what you guys thought down in the comments. You guys know that I always love to hang out down there with you and just chill and talk about it. Also, if you like this look and you want to see more looks like them, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and TikTok. My username is the same for everything. It's just Christopher JMUA. And if you gain nothing out of this video, if you gain nothing out of any of my videos, then please at least gain this. And that is to always remember Remember, and to never forget that you are absolutely beautiful and I love you guys. Bye!